me a hint. Nope, I want to see the look on your face when you open your present. Well, this must be some present. I mean, you bring me here in the middle of the afternoon from the office. Now, it's not my birthday. True, so we can safely rule out a pogo stick. And it's not an anniversary, is it? True again. Well, then what is this? Oh, I can't stand this any longer. This is a box full of paper. I mean, what kind of louse gives a girl a box full of paper for a present? A very loving louse. You see, these papers aren't just for you, Cass. For us. Divorce papers. It's just preliminary, but soon I'll be free. No more Joanna in my life. Nothing and no one can keep us apart. Trouble? Mr. Baxter, you don't stop that transaction, you will have trouble the rest of your unborn days. I don't care what I said. It's a lapse of memory momentarily. I'm back at the helm with, with both hands on the tiller. And you get this straight. We are not selling those folks down the river. We're going to expand. And you tell my people at Vanguard Technology that Ace of Buchanan thinks they are doing one hell of a job. You got it? Well done, sir. If I may say so, that is. You may, Nigel. What are you doing here, Wade? You should be home making babies with your pretty little bride. <laughs> Mr. Buchanan. Oh, Nigel, I made the boy blush. You better leave us alone. We got some serious man talk here. Come in. Thanks. Uh, I'm not blushing, sir. I'm just having difficulty saying what I came to say. Well, first of all, stop the sir stuff. Nobody calls me sir unless they're asking for money. <laughs> I see. I just, I didn't know who else to turn to. You see, sir, excuse me, Asa, um, I've stumbled onto a really great situation, and with just a little backing, I can make it pay off big. And how little uh, is the backing? $50,000. Hey, Cindy, thanks for coming over so soon. John should be here any minute. Good. Listen, did you get a chance to talk to Bo? Did you find anything out? Well, he was there when I went to Elizabeth's. I talked to him a little further about him helping me find Patrick, but nothing new yet. Good. Well, as I said, John's going to be here soon with the information he found out about that psychiatric clinic. Well, didn't he tell you what he found in California yet? Uh, no, actually, he called me from the plane. He was on one of those phones. He said he couldn't talk very confidentially. So I told him to meet me here at Clint's office. I figured we'd get all the privacy we want here. <sighs> For all our sakes, I hope John learned something. Patrick said he'd stop at nothing to have his revenge. As of right now, Patrick is just a phantom, but we've got a more immediate danger. Right here, right now. Your Uncle Bo? Yeah. You know, I had the strangest sensation when I was talking to him earlier. It was probably just my imagination, but I felt like he was staring right through me. Like he'd known me for a long time. Cora. Hey, Sir, John, how you doing? In. Welcome back with Melinda. Don't look so shocked, Cora. John always works better with a partner, don't you, John? I didn't have a choice. Oh, come on, be honest. Without me along, we never would have found what you were after. Oh, you mean you found something on Patrick? Oh, John, I don't know how to thank you. Well, actually, we should thank you. We had a great time in Los Angeles. Yeah, things were just peachy. Oh, come on, don't listen to him. With my help, we found that Patrick did indeed stay at the Langyard Clinic, although it was for a very short time. Then Cindy was right. Maybe Patrick escaped? Yeah, soon after Patrick was admitted to the Langyard Clinic, he disappeared. Now, whether he escaped or was smuggled out of there, we don't know because my intrepid partner blew it. Blew it? What are you talking about? I'm the one who got my hands on the file. She also got herself recognized as a TV star. You can imagine how I felt running out the back door of the office with a stolen file under my arm. Hey, who cares how we got are it? Are you we telling me that you got Patrick files here? Yes, from Dr. Lambert's private collection. And if he were a nicer guy, he'd pat me on the back and say, good job. Melinda, <laughs> by stealing the file, you also alerted anyone involved in a possible conspiracy. Not just Dr. Lambert, but who's ever responsible for Patrick's disappearance, including Patrick himself, and that puts Cindy in danger. Oh, don't be angry at Melinda, John. I'm already on Patrick's hit list. Yeah, so am I. So I think any risk you took to get this file was worth it. Well, I'd feel a damn sight better if there was a way to protect you, Cord, especially now that the gloves are off. Well, they've been off for quite some time, John, ever since Cindy got that letter saying that Patrick was gonna live for his revenge. Well, let's take a look at the file. The sooner we get a lead on my brother, the sooner we'll all be safe. Good luck. What the? <laughs> it's just a lot of numbers. Yeah. I don't know, maybe those numbers represent something, like some well, kind of a code? a patient at the clinic said that the clinic's computer could decipher it. You're the computer whiz, Cord. Now, uh, maybe you can make some sense of it, huh? There's only one way to find out, isn't there? 
Guess Clint won't mind if we borrow his computer real quick. Uh, maybe y'all better fix yourself some coffee. We're gonna be here for some time. $50,000 is not lunch money, Wade. What's it for? A very sound investment. And chances like this don't come along every day. Maybe not at your home. But that phone of mine rings off the hook, people asking me for money. I generally say no, unless they can uh, make me say yes. Well, you'd be a fool not to get in a... What I mean is... You've got a chance to get in on the ground floor of one of the fastest growing companies in America. Microchips? No, actually, it's, um, <laughs> hamburgers and chips. <laughs> um, angel burgers, to be exact. Now, you know Wanda and Gilbert have franchised their operation. Now, Charlie is in charge of expansion, and what he's been telling... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Charlie is not asking for the money. You are. You tell me. Okay. With $50,000, I could buy my own franchise. Now, I know a perfect spot to put it, right on the interstate coming into town where it meets the old highway. If I can have my own franchise, I know I can get the bank to help me lease the land at least. And, and then from there, when the profits start rolling in, I can buy the land outright. I'll be rich. I, I mean, we will be rich if we can... Wait. I already am. Oh, so, um... Does that mean you're not interested? No, what it means is when I invest, I must have a strong gut feeling. And Wade, I'm getting that feeling now. Really? I don't know anything about burger franchises, but I do know when a man has a good plan and knows how to follow it through. I am in, partner. P partners? Me and Asa Buchanan? I... What, are you not going to go to somebody else and play us against each other to get a better deal? Oh, no, sir. I, I just, I can't believe that this is this easy. Cash part's easy. Building a franchise is a moneymaker. That's the hard part. Well, I've never been afraid of hard work. Well, good. You come back in a couple of hours, I'll draw up a check. You'll sign some papers. Is that quick enough? It's perfect. Look, I, I, don't, I don't know how to thank you for don't this. Don't thank me. Go out and make us some money. All right. What's all this talk about making money? Oh, hey, Bo. Um, well, I'll let Asa tell you. Hope you know you got a hell of a father. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sure made his day, didn't you? Well, wouldn't you smile if you were just handed $50,000? $50,000? When did you start giving away money like that to a kid like Wade Coleman? Trust me. The kid is street smart. He's going to go a long way. Well, that may well be, Pa, but, you know, with Clint away, I hope you're not giving away the store. It's my store, isn't it? Relax, Bo. Since I got off that damn medicine your Dr. Bruno was giving me, I am my old savvy self again. I don't know which I like better. Sitting here snuggling with you, or... Looking at those divorce papers. Well, that's why I wanted you to see them, so you know it wasn't just wishful thinking. Well, I am sure that there are a few people out there in the world who are happier than us, but I don't think they deserve it as much as we do. No way. Mm. Mm. Although some people might think we're very greedy. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have love and freedom and a rent-free apartment. <laughs> mm. And don't forget, great hair. Great lips. Mm. And a great body. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's true. No, <laughs> I was thinking of yours. Oh, yeah? yeah? What were you thinking about mine? I was thinking about that cute little dimple on the inside of your knee. Uh When was the last time that we could just laugh and have fun like this? I think Lincoln was president. No, let me tell you something. It's been too long. And from now on, no looking back, not anymore. From now on, we are living life to the limit. After your divorce goes through, we are going to get married. And we'll find a place of our own. We'll make lots of little teeny cornos. What is the matter? Okay, look, now if this has something to do with Joanna, no, I am okay. No, Joanna's history. Now that her father's dead, no one can make me stay with her. Then what is it? 
Look, I don't mean to spoil your dreams of shoes and rice and wedding cakes. But right now, before we can even think about marriage, there's something I have to finish. With Lord Henry gone and you working on your divorce with Joanna... I said I would be free. I didn't say I could get married right away. Well, why not? I mean, I want it, you want it. Okay, maybe, um, maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe I'm the only one who wants it. Don't be silly. If you don't marry me, I'll sue. It's just the timing is all wrong. Let me tie up some loose ends and then what we can talk What loose ends? Now listen to me. I do not want any excuses from you. No, it's no excuse. It's something I have to do, something important. Okay, well, we will work on it and do it together. I am not letting you out of my sight from now on. Even if it kills you? It... Now, you are serious about this, aren't you? Now, I thought that... that... Since Lord Henry is gone, that we have nothing to worry about. We're not in danger anymore. I wish. But the note from my father from the grave may outlast Lord Henry. Wait, a and note? I... What note? I was given a note by my... a friend of my father's. He said that my father wanted me to have it in case... in case something happened. Well, what did it say? It was a warning. My father wanted me to watch out for Lord Henry and others. He said things are not as they seem. But things, what things? He couldn't or wouldn't say in the note, just that the truth lies at Wellesley Hall. Wellesley Hall, that's where Lord Henry lives in England, right? Yeah, the same. And I checked it out last time I was there, but I just came away with more questions. Well, what kind of questions? Rob, come on. Now, I am a PI. Maybe I can help you with this. And maybe you can get yourself killed. No, I'm sorry, Cass. But the last time you started snooping around, you got yourself kidnapped. All right, so what am I supposed to do here? Stand back, let you take all the risks and ask all the questions? I'm sorry, Cass. That's the way it has to be. Rob, no, I... No, I don't want to put you in any more danger, not by telling you too much or by marrying you. Oh, sometimes you can be so stubborn. Well, I can see that I'm not going to be able to change your mind. You're learning. You know... You are going to make some guy a perfect wife one of these days. Yeah, you're right. Oh, since I can't get you to open up on this subject, I have a great idea. Mm -hmm. I'm open for suggestions. You are, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a great one. How about if for the next 48 hours we pretend that we don't have a care in the world? Better yet. Why don't we pretend the rest of the world doesn't even exist? No one but you and me? Uh -huh. Want to get boring? Ask over there. Nigel, a couple of iced teas. Bo's going to sit a spell. You are, aren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can stick around for a little while. I got about a million things to do, though. I'm not surprised. I hardly see you anymore. You're out before I get up in the morning, and uh, when I turn in, you're still out. Well, since you've made Clint, uh, giving him charge of Buchanan Enterprises, I seem to have a lot more time on my hands these days. You're angry with me, are you? No, no, sir. No, it's your company, just like you say. And you're my son. Yeah, but so is Clint. So if you entrust uh, Buchanan Enterprises to him, I just have to accept that. You're both my boys, and I just, I just hate the feuding. And this all began, I guess, I don't know, what's the word? I was incapacitated. I'm still not clear, uh... How it all began. Well, I think you're going to have to ask Clint about that. He seems to challenge everything that I say. Well, I'll ask him when he gets back, but right now I'm talking to you. As I understand it, Buchanan Enterprises was practically shipwrecked on the rocks with you at the tiller. <laughs> this is something Clint told you, right? No, no, this is something the figures told me. How could you let me sign my name to so many disastrous deals? This is Clint's interpretation, though, Pa. Orca Oilwell, you didn't push for that. Southwestern newspaper deal, Olympic paper mill, and not to mention the Vanguard technology. Well, I'll tell you something. I scudded that deal. I'm sick and tired of hurting innocent people. Yeah, but you make it sound like all those moves originated with me. Well, you were in charge. I mean, I didn't know what was going on from day to day. I mean, if it's not your responsibility, whose was it? All those maneuvers were in motion before I even got back to Landview. No, that's right. 
Pa, you started to restructure the company while I was still in Europe. Now, it took months uh, for me to get back into the business, but that's when I discovered just how disastrous your moves really were. I couldn't reverse them. God knows I tried, Pa. You're telling me that it was my doing. Well, I've always worshipped the almighty dollar, but to... We're going to undo that damage. Buy back the paper. That's for starters. A we? Did you say we? This is a family business. We are going to put Buchanan Enterprise on the right course. That is, if you're still interested. Oh, am I ever? You know, Wade was right. I do have one hell of a great father. I have one question to ask you, Bo. And uh, for us to work together, you got to tell me the truth. Anything, Pa. Tina, what in the Sam Hill that I hear about you... You two go in and try and get hitched. How many access codes does that make it? That's 21 now. Man, this is a tough program to break into. I think you go... Guys, better get yourself some more coffee because you're going to be here all night. Yeah, well, unfortunately, i got to get back to the office to see a client. Yeah, I have to go back to WVLE, too. Hey, thanks, you guys. You've done your bit by bringing back Patrick's file. I'll just stay here with court till we break the code. We'll check back with you later. Huh? Good luck. <sighs> I don't know how I'm going to break into this program. Look, I'm no computer expert, but maybe you're just making it too complicated. Sandy, come on. You don't open a door with a rusty key, you know? Breaking into a program like this, you need the exact access code to, to get in. That's the only way I'm going to find out what those numbers mean. But that's what I'm saying. Maybe those numbers aren't a code. Maybe they're just numbers. No, I'm telling you, those numbers have got to represent something. Probably something in English, like uh, Dr. Lambert's record of what went on with Patrick the whole time he was in the clinic. I, I don't know. Maybe... What, did you think of something? No, but maybe you did. What do you mean? Well, uh, maybe you're right. Maybe those numbers don't represent words. Maybe they... Maybe it's some kind of graphic configuration, right? Let me get into a graphic mode here. Okay, here goes. Ready? Ha! Ah. Let me see. Got it. Whoa. <gasps> Yes. There it is. Well, this is file, right? I, I bet that clinic has got some high-tech filing system. Look, there he is again. All right. Don't anybody yell! I know I'm late. Sorry. Oh, Sandy. Can you run downstairs and tell the makeup people I'll be right down there as soon as I can and uh, get all the background information that I need for today's interview on my desk in, like, two minutes? You've got it. Thanks. Oh, Elliot, can you fix the set? Uh, the last time I used this chair over here, I had to go crane to see the prompter. Sure, Melinda. Thanks. Feel free to come in at any time, Miss Kramer. So sorry I'm late, Garth. You see, I was uh, doing a special investigation. Spare me. Tom Dennison might have given you a free hand, but I pay you to uh, interview people for View on Land View. Ja wohl, mein Führer. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to prepare for today's interview. It's going to be great. It certainly will, since I've lined up a new guest. What do you mean, a new guest? I'm interviewing Mary Lynn Coleman. She just got a new role on Fraternity Roll. It's going to be great. Snooze, Phil. What are you talking about? This is exactly the kind of thing the viewers love to see. Local girl makes good, all that, you know. Then you can cancel the Coleman kid, because I've lined up somebody truly special. <sighs> Lady Joanna Layton. Talk about yesterday's news. I just interviewed her and her late father not too long ago. Well, she has something new she'd like to tell our viewers. Now, you'll find I've prepared your questions. Make sure you answer them, ask them all, and don't deviate. Is that understood? No, it is not understood. Ah, oh, uh, really? I can't expect Melinda to devote her entire show to me. Thank you, Your Ladyship. I hadn't planned to. Now, look here, Melinda. You'll have plenty of time to interview your scheduled guests, Melinda. I only need a few minutes of airtime. It shouldn't take me long to tell the world the truth about my father's death. The whole town knows about it. They tell me you came with an eyelash of getting married to Tina. I didn't believe it at first. And all the strange things that are going on. Well, you, you know how rumors get going in this town. Uh, by the way, where did this one come from? Wanda, who else? She knows all about Landview from that restaurant of hers. Yeah, well, I'm here to tell you that uh, whatever she heard is wrong. You're telling me that you did not go to some justice of the peace? No, I'm telling you, I went to a justice of the peace, but it's not for what you think. 
I've learned one thing about life, Bo. With there's smoke, there's usually a wedding. Now, are you and Tina planning something? Uh, I don't know what Tina's planning, but as far as I'm concerned, Paul, you're looking at an innocent victim. Bo, you're a lot of things. Innocent bull. No, but as far as ladies are concerned, the proof's on my side. First Delilah, then Dee Dee, now Tina. Pa, Tina, Tina tricked me into going to that Justice of the Peace. I had no idea what she had on her mind. What the hell do you think you're going down there for, to pay a parking ticket? No, no, I, but I certainly didn't go down there to get married. Pa, I'll tell you the truth. You know, Tina has been after me for months. And you know what she's like when she gets a man on her sights. Yes, I do. She's a heat-seeking female missile. Yeah, that's the absolute truth. Well, I, I was nice to her after Cord dumped her. And I think the problem is she misinterpreted my niceness. She sent me a note saying that she was uh, going to do something desperate. So you know me, naturally. I followed her, ended up at this justice of the peace. She expected you to marry her just like that? I, I don't know. Like I say, she was, uh, she was desperate. Anyway, I tried to reason with her. You know, but she would not listen. So I got out of there just as soon as I could. That's a relief. I'll tell you, Pa, I've been burnt one too many times by women. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to let Vicky and Clint be married for all of us. I don't think I like that any better. I know you've been hurt, but I don't want you to give up in the uh, institution of marriage. <laughs> Who wants to live in an institution? No, I'm serious, Bo. I'd like to see you back in a harness. Not with Tina, of course. If you did that, I'd have to think twice about bringing you back on board. Your tea, sir. I'll get that. Hello? Oh, Baxter, could you hold on a second? Bo, this will uh, take a few minutes. Uh, tie up one more loose end. OK, Paul, listen, you go right ahead. Whatever's good for Buchanan Enterprise is good for all of us. OK, Baxter, lay down and give me the good news. Did you tell him we, uh, the sale is off? How'd they react? I hope trumpets and confetti, huh? Good. OK. Yeah? I would say about Friday. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Don't give up yet. Cindy, look. We keep getting back to square one. No matter how many different codes I use, no matter how many different sequences, I still get the same picture of Patrick. Look, maybe you need a break. Why don't you give me a try? You? Well, I'm not as experienced as you are, but I have run financial programs on Wall Street. Sure, go ahead. I mean, you can't be doing any worse than I've been doing. Thanks. All right, I'm going to forget about sequences and codes and right. just stick with the image on the screen. OK, we've got Patrick's face. How about if I just type in the word face? Oh, no, don't oh, erase. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm pressing the escape button. This image is all we've got. I don't want to lose it. Uh, There, it's saved. Now what? Why don't you try that again, Cindy? What? No, no, uh, maybe you weren't erasing anything. Maybe that was just part of the program. Why don't you type in face real quick once again? But, Cord, I... Please, j just try it. Remember what you said, the simple approach. Right? No, see, it's happening yet. Let's no, stop it. No, no, just leave it be. Maybe just run in the program here. Huh. Huh? <gasps> oh, my God. That's Bo. The re how did that happen? It's not a question of how. The question is why. Why don't you try typing in face one more time? <sighs> it's Patrick again. Again, see if we can get Bo back. This thing is getting stranger and stranger by the minute. Why is Bo's picture in Patrick's file? And who would want to make the two images interchangeable? Well, you got me. I tell you, Bo's picture sure shows up in the strangest places. What do you mean? Well, I, I told you about how Rob and I were down in Wellesley Hall. That's the Leighton dungeon over in England. We found that picture of him right there in the cellar. Oh, well, that's right. You told me. Huh. Well, at least we're not chasing shadows. We know now that Patrick is connected to Bo. But how are they connected, Cord? I mean, by two computer images, one turning into the other? What does that mean? I don't know. Look, um, can you get the two pictures side by side on the screen? I don't know. Let me try it. Uh, type in, uh, compare. 
Why? Just do it. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Yeah. Okay, now, now, try this. Try, uh, try merge. Patrick's eyes, and you got Bo's jawline. Damn. I tell you, somebody must have had a reason for wanting to do this. But what is it? Oh, I was so hoping John's trip to the clinic would give us the answers we're looking for. We're no closer to finding Patrick than we ever were. Uh, maybe not. Then again, maybe we're closer than we think we are. You know, uh, Paul, you made your decision uh, about Vanguard right in the nick of time. If we would have unloaded Vanguard Technologies, there would be a whole lot of people out of work right now. Paul, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just a little sleepy. It's the heat. I thought the iced tea might help. Mm. Yeah, well, I was just talking about Vanguard Technologies. Yeah, what about it? Well, just that you saved the day there. Although, we might have been able to come up with a third alternative. Alternative to what? Well, Paul, first you were going to sell the company, and then you knew that that was a mistake, and you decided to keep it and expand. I think if we, if we put our heads together, we may be able to come up with another choice. That's if you're up to uh, discussing it right now. Maybe we'll do that later. Well, Paul, the, the phone may ring. It may be your man, Baxter, uh, wanting a decision. Now, I think we should have something to tell him. You talk to Baxter. Me? Asa, you're the one running the company right now. I'm just here to help out a little. Well, if you help, why don't you handle Baxter and Vanguard Technologies? I'll discuss all of this with you later. I, I've got to take a nap. All right, Paul, listen, I do have one suggestion. You know, maybe we shouldn't tell Clint uh, that I'm helping you out again. All right, now you know how sensitive he is about his turf. Uh, I, I don't want to have any more feuds. You're right, no fights, no feuds. And I tell you, I'm, I'm not in the mood to call Clint or anybody else. Paul, you go on up and you take your nap, and I'm going to take care of everything here, okay? I thank you, Bo. You know, I don't know what I'd do without you. I don't either, Ace, I swear. I don't either. Malcolm, it's Bo Buchanan. Uh, may I speak to Cynthia, please? Cindy's go to the banner? By any chance did she go there to meet Cord? No, no, that's what I thought. Uh, no, no, no message for her. But you can leave a message for Elizabeth. You can tell her that I've already taken care of one problem uh, over at Ace of Buchanan's, but I'm going to have to deal with the other one firsthand. such a delay. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm in no rush. Um, so, are you nervous? This is it show? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you're a big TV star now. This is just a piece of cake. Oh, well, to tell you the truth, I find it's a lot easier to face the camera when I have a script in my head. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, actually, the purpose of this interview is just to sort of tell the viewers what you're like, you know, in your work and, and your life. Yeah, I'll be right there, Sandy. Just, um, be yourself, you know? You'll be true. <sighs> be myself. The hardest part. Oh my gosh! Isn't that Mary Lynn Coleman, the newest, brightest star in television? Please, Mrs. Coleman, give me your autograph or a kiss. Wait, cut it out. Perhaps you'd like my autograph. You may be looking at the next great business success of the 1980s. Well, you're telling me. I've got a surprise. Me too. Uh, let me go first. All right. But yours better be good. Mine's a keeper. So is mine. This is $10,000. According to my calculations, that's a 20% down payment on your Angel Burger franchise. 
this is incredible that you came up with this amount of money the same day. Where did you get this? Randy. I asked him for an advance on my first two months' salary. I knew it was a long shot, but he was really great about it. He had them write the check out for me just like that. Yeah, Randy's a real prince. Is something wrong? I mean, isn't that what you need to buy the franchise? Not anymore. You can tell Randy Stone thanks, but no thanks. Asa Buchanan promised to give me the entire $50,000. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful! From now on, you and I make our own luck without the help of Randy Stone. With Asa on our side, the sky's the limit. Oh, hey, you two. Break it up. It's, it's a couple seconds till airtime. Okay, she's all yours, Melinda. What do they say in show business? Break a leg? Uh, promise me that you'll watch, okay? Are you kidding? I'm gonna go back to Asa's and seal this deal. Maybe I'll watch the show with my new partner. <laughs> well, you're gonna be sitting over here. Now you know what to say. Yes, by heart. That's my Joanna. Just look into the camera and tell the truth. The whole truth about Robert Coronel. Oh, considering that this is your introduction into the world of lights, camera, and action, you, you seem very calm. Well, you should see me on the inside. No, Nothing but butterflies. No, I find that hard to believe. I mean, before we were on camera, you seemed a little bit anxious then, but once the red light went on, you just calmed right down. Mary Look Lynn Coney, I think you're a born actress. My little well, pal, Mary Lynn Tennyson. So I, I want to thank I mean, our she's guest, a big Mary daytime TV star. Yeah, today. she doesn't look half bad, does she? Mm -mm. Of course, why should I go out for steak <laughs> well, when I've got hamburger? Much, but that's right. right. Why should you go out for steak? No, no, you? I think you've done a little bit Hamburger? Oh, you are bad. Has anyone who's read the newspaper know your life has sort of been a soap opera? I mean, you've, you've been through tragedy and scandal and... Well, now I think that maybe you can just leave the soap opera on the set of Fraternity Row and maybe get on with your happy life, huh? Well, I hadn't thought of it that way. But maybe you're right. Thanks, Melinda. Well, thank you, and uh, good luck to you. I uh, had intended originally... You on land, to be our only guest today, <laughs> but I was paid a visit unexpectedly by someone, someone that I think you'll remember as the daughter of the late Lord Henry Layton. So, Joanna, uh, I understand that there? you oh, have no, but it's not some good very news. interesting things to say to our, our viewers today. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Well, this is your chance. I'd like to speak directly to the people of Landview. Now stay on her and don't I'm move unless I tell you to. I'm here to set the record straight regarding pause. the death of my beloved father. I understand, Lady Joanna, that you're still in mourning. Yes, of course I'm still in mourning. But what hurts more than anything else is knowing that my father, who was the kindest, gentlest man in the world, was viciously and cruelly murdered. But the district attorney... I know what the district attorney said. But Herb Callison has a vested interest in suppressing the truth. Oh, yeah. so you're saying Melinda that there's Mary a Lynn was cover a up actress. in City Hall? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. My father was murdered, and I'm here to tell you that I know who his murderer is. I can't believe it. You've replaced Patrick's nose with Bo's. Hmm. Well, what about the eyes? Almost like Patrick London doesn't even exist. Whoa, whoa, whose eyes are these? Patrick's. I'd know them anywhere. Yeah. Huh. And there's Bo's eyes, both of them together. Well, have you interchanged the two? Let's try it. Bingo, both. It's still got to be some kind of theoretical puzzling. <laughs> People just can't be pieced together. What about dental records? What about him? No, no, they can't be interchangeable. I mean, plastic surgery, uh, contact lenses, maybe even skin grafts, but the whole internal structure of the face? Yeah. <sighs> well, my daddy, L. Roberts, said to me once, that if a man could think about it, he can do it. Yeah, but what kind of man would think of such things? It's like my brother has been systematically erased and replaced with Bo Buchanan. Let's see, settle down right now. We just got ourselves a fancy computer program. Or do we?
It's really okay, Nigel. Mr. Buchanan is expecting me. Are you quite certain, sir? He's upstairs napping. Yeah. Well, it must be tiring making all that money. I better get used to the feeling, huh, Nige? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, no sweat. I'll, I'll just wait down here until Mr. Buchanan gets up, that's all. It may be quite some time. If you could perhaps call back this evening. Oh, no. It's much too important to wait till this evening. Uh, Mr. Buchanan wouldn't mind if I waited here. I'm hey, positive. So who is that at the door? No way. A nice surprise. So, well, I, I didn't mean to interrupt your nap, Mr. Buchanan, but we both know how important it is to move quickly on this stuff. We do? Mr. Buchanan, may I get you anything? Oh, no, nothing. That'll be all, Nigel. Yes, sir. Oh, well, now, what is it we uh, have to act quickly on, Wade? Well, our franchise purchase. We don't want someone else snapping it up before we do, right, partner? Partner? Oh, uh, Wade, what, uh, what really brings you here? Well, the, the check. What check? <laughs> what check? You and your jokes. Uh, you haven't forgotten about our deal, have you? Young man, I never forget a deal. Oh, Ooh, what a relief. You had me believing for a minute there that you changed your mind about the 50000 $50,000? Yeah, I'm here. You told me to come over and pick it up and go out and buy us an Angel Burger franchise. Wait, uh, the heat, it, it got you, huh? I, I don't know anything about any Angel Burger franchise, and I sure don't recall promising you any $50,000. You had to. We, we discussed this just a few hours ago. Y you, you said that I should just pick it up and, and, and go and... Wait, wait, you telling me that I don't know when I promise five zeros and when I don't? No, sir. I was just thinking that maybe with all your other business dealings today or maybe you're not feeling too well. Hey, I feel fine. I never felt better. Yes, I'm a little tired. But I'm going to tell you something, son. I'm not that tired to, to be led around by my nose. Sir, I'm not doing that. I'm just collecting what I was promised. I distinctly heard you say that you were willing to... Don't tell me what I said. You see, you're talking to Asa Buchanan here, boy. Not, not some uh, charity committee. Do you think in my right mind I would lend you $50,000? You're not even wet behind the ears yet, boy? Wait a minute. I might be young, but I offered you a hell of a deal. I don't like that kind of language here, boy. This is the kind of language you understand. We had a deal, and you, you gave me your word. I'll give you the back of my hand. You don't leave here pronto. I mean that. Nigel. No, wait. There's no need to call your butler. I'm out of here. You know something? I knew you were a hard-nosed businessman, but I always thought you were an honest one. You can keep your money for all the good it does you. My father is gone, and nothing I can do or say will bring him back. But the man who killed him is still alive and free. Now, I ask the people of Landview, is that fair? Is that justice? What about what, what old man did to you and me? Rob, she's out of her mind. Like hell, she knows exactly what she's doing. The police and the district attorney have ruled out foul play, and you say that we should think otherwise? Because they deal only with evidence. But I know the motive behind my father's murder. You do? Revenge, the kind of cold, calculated act we associate with, with gangsters and men raised by the mob. So you're saying that your father was a, a victim of the mob? I'm saying that the man who killed him has ties with the mob, ties of, of a strong and intimate nature. He also has great influence here in Landview, especially with Herb Callison. Well, that's why I've come directly to the people of Landview. I urge them to rise up and demand that Herb Callison be dismissed and my father's case reopened. So a special prosecutor yes. is... Yes, a special prosecutor. One who isn't influenced by his daughter's love affair. Then perhaps the police can do their job and Robert Coronel will be arrested for the murder of my father. Oh. 
No, it isn't possible. Well, you know it's not possible, and I know it's not possible, but Cindy, it's happening right there in front of our very eyes. Yeah, but my... Patrick London is turning into Bo Buchanan. My brother is made of flesh and blood. He is not a computer image. You can't take him apart piece by piece and reassemble him into somebody else. And how do you explain what we're looking at right now, Cindy? Maybe Patrick himself invented this program. Maybe he just ran it as a sick kind of amusement for himself when he was at the clinic. I think you're really stretching here now, oh, Cindy. Stretching? Well, at least it's humanly possible, which is more than I can say for what you're thinking. Cindy, you're thinking it, too. Now, come on, why can't you just admit it? No, it's too horrible, even for Patrick. Girl, I'm sorry. But come on. From what I know about your brother, there is nothing too horrible for the man. Come on, let's just turn it off. It's just somebody's idea. No, Cindy, joke. don't. But cord. Come on. Remember that towel? Towel? Huh? What towel? The one that Tina found in Dee Dee's motel room when she was staying here in Landview. The one with the lipstick message on it that said Bo is a fake. Now, here is the proof right here. No, I just can't believe it. Can't or won't sin. Come on, look at it. People are more than faces and eyes, Cord. They're voices and mannerisms and memories. My brother can't have been wiped out. I don't care what the computer says. Patrick can't have turned himself into Bo. Bo. Mark Harmon. I can't believe Melinda let Joanna rip you to shreds on her show. You know, she must be really desperate to raise the ratings. Cash, she was as stunned as we were by Joanna's tirade. Rob, she could have kicked her off the set. She didn't have to let her rant and rave for ten minutes, accusing you of murder, accusing my father of using his office to protect you. We'll set the record straight. When? When she has destroyed our lives? Because that's exactly what she's going to do, including my father's career. Thank you, Anna. Dad! Are you okay? Sure. I guess you've been hounded by reporters ever since Joanna's performance. Oh, yeah. Look, I think that you and Rob should sue Joanna for defamation of character and anything else you can come up with. Well, let's hold off on the lawsuits until the situation cools down a little, huh? Joanna is not going to let it cool down. Not until Rob is thrown in jail and you're kicked out of office. Yeah, well, she succeeded on one count. The state attorney general has asked me to step aside until Joanna's charges can be investigated. Well, Daddy would be proud of me, don't you think? Joanna, I'm not at all certain that publicly accusing Robert was a good idea. You thought it was a splendid idea before the show. And I was a smashing success. I've created a firestorm of controversy that will set this town on its ear. That's what concerns me. We are very close to completing our plans to take over Buchanan Enterprises. And all this media attention you've stirred up is going to make our position much more dangerous. We must allow the flames to die down a while. Absolutely not. I refuse to sit back and let my father's murder go unpunished. Joanna. I gave you my word that I would avenge your father's death and that Robert would be punished. But we must wait for the most appropriate time. No. While we're biding our time, Robert and Cassie will be together and I'll be the object of everyone's pity. Well, I won't have that, Garth. Now, on the way back from the studio, I came up with a brilliant idea. But I must ask a favor from you and from Bo Buchanan. Or rather, the man posing as Bo Buchanan. People are more than faces and eyes, Cord. They're voices and mannerisms and memories. My brother couldn't have been wiped out. I don't care what the computer says. Patrick couldn't have turned himself into Bo. Bo. Cindy, are you okay? Oh. You look like you're about to faint. No, I'm fine. Well, what's the matter? Is it something on the computer? Hey, how was our trip to the park? Oh, we had a wonderful time, except Al found the sandbox today, so watch out, he's full of sand. Well, we'd better get you cleaned up for dinner, buddy. Are you cooking dinner? Yeah. Sole with almonds, green beans, fresh garden salad, all your favorites. Wow. So that's why you wanted me to take Al to the park all by myself. Mm-hmm. And I have another surprise, too. My favorite white wine, maybe? Wine, yeah. <laughs> also, I invited a couple of guests over for dinner. My heavens. What's got into you? Well, I just figured it was about time we started celebrating my good fortune. And mine? And Al's? Uh-huh. So who's going to celebrate with us? Max. Mm. And, uh, Brenda McGillis. Just lost my appetite. Oh, Gabrielle, don't be that way. 
I'm sorry, but when you left the hospital, I thought that would be the last we saw of that one. <sighs> Brenda is a good friend. She's a terrific nurse. She's partly responsible for my recovery. Lucky that her irresponsibility didn't cause you to go back into a coma. I might have lost you forever, thanks Sweetheart, to her. Sweetheart, I told you, I was the one who made the decision about the hypnosis. With Brenda's encouragement. Why don't we just forget about the hypnosis, okay? It's over and nothing happened. And if it had, you can bet on it she would have blamed me. Why don't you lay off Brenda? She is warm, she's very caring, and she's a very funny lady. And if you'd give her a chance, I'm sure you would enjoy her company as much as I do. Don't count on it. It's not going to happen unless you give it a chance. Is that so hard to do? Yes. But I'll give it the old gaucho try. All right. You know, you and Brenda both grew up on a ranch. I'm sure you'd have a lot of experiences to share. We are going to have a terrific evening, honey. If I don't burn the fish, I'll be back. Dad, the state attorney general is a friend of yours. Now, how can he undermine you like this? He had to respond to what Joanna said on the air. Well, he could have responded by saying Joanna was acting out of revenge and, and he supports you 100%. She would have included him in the conspiracy. No, his, his only option was to call for an independent investigation into Layton's death. All right, well, I hope he takes care of it immediately so Rob can be cleared. Well, Cass, whoever investigates may believe Garth instead of me. After all, the pillbox did fall out of my jacket pocket. No, now Garth frames you. He even lied to Rafe. Why, why would Garth want Leighton dead, Rob? And what kind of a relationship was it? Did they get along? Yeah, they seemed pretty tight. Dad, you investigate Garth and you'll wind up with your motive. We already investigated him, sweetheart. We came up with nothing. I'm afraid, Rob, you better prepare yourself for the worst. Yeah, thanks for trying. It was a judgment call. I just didn't think the facts warranted an arrest. I still don't. No, if anyone should be arrested, it should be Joanna. And as far as Henry's concerned, good riddance. I mean, the world is going to be a lot safer without him around, kidnapping people, terrorizing them. What are you talking about? Nothing. I, I just never trusted him, that's all. A nice try, but I'm not buying it. Henry was involved in Cassie's kidnapping. He used it to convince me that she was in danger from the mob and to blackmail me into marrying Joanna in order to protect Cassie. Doesn't exactly look like headline news to me. Well, it, it's not. I was just showing Cindy some of the improvements we made around here since the time when she was a reporter for us. Yeah, but you know, you looked like you were in a real panic when I walked in. Oh, that was because I was afraid I had erased Briggs' editorial for tomorrow's edition. Oh, oh, well, it really wouldn't matter if you did. Briggs writes lousy editorials. Hey, thanks so much for your expert opinion there, Bo. What the hell are you doing here anyway? Yeah, you just causing more trouble? I came here to give Cindy some very important information about her brother. Oh, what'd you find out? It can wait. No, it's all right. I was just on my way No, no, work. no. Please, Cor, don't leave on my account. I'll uh, see you at the Sanders house uh, later on, maybe about 7 o'clock. Fine. I'll be there. I just can't believe it. believe that that is my brother. City, come on, it all adds up. The fact that Bo was being held prisoner at Wellesley Hall, the fact that Dee Dee left that message that said that Bo was a fake, the fact that Patrick's picture kept turning into Bo's. Well, there's got to be another explanation for the images on the computer. Fine, Cindy, then what is it? Well, maybe there was a computer genius at Langyard Clinic who was also a science fiction nut, and maybe he just had some fun with the patient's files and turning them into other people. Uh-huh. Why did they pick Bo Buchanan, huh? Why not some famous movie star or politician? Cindy, it is too much of a coincidence. And if you're right, where is Patrick now? Well, that's what I am hoping to find out tonight. No, no, you're not going to find out anything tonight at Elizabeth's because you're not going. Oh, look, Court, I am staying there and I will do anything I can to find out the truth about my brother. If that... That man is not going to give you the truth, Cindy. I saw the look in his eyes. Now it is some kind of a trap. He is on to us. I'm very well aware of the fact that Bo didn't marry Tina Lord Roberts. Why must I read this trash? Well, because that's what gave me my idea. You see, I need to borrow your fake Bo for my interview with a reporter from the intruder this afternoon. 
You agreed to an interview with this rag? Joanna, don't you realize the vast sums of money your father paid to keep you out of the London tabloids? Why must you cater to these sensation mongers here in the States? Because I need to protect myself. And the intruder will print whatever story I give them. If Landview's most eligible bachelor is seen to be hovering over me, protecting me, giving the impression that he cares about me, then people will believe me and not whatever spite Robert comes up with next. Parading bow in front of the press as, as your newest swain will cause questions we won't be able to answer. God, I'm beginning to rue the day I ever let you in on the scheme. You had no choice after I discovered the prisoners in the bomb shelter. I'm much more resourceful than you give me credit for, Garth. After all, I am my father's daughter. If you truly loved your father, if you cared one shilling about his reputation, you'd pull yourself together. You'd allow me to avenge his death at the most appropriate time, and you'd forget the prisoners you've seen in the bomb shelter. It's not my father's reputation you're protecting. You want to control me, to become indispensable to me. Well, I won't hear of it, Garth. Do you hear me? It'll never happen, never. All Bo saw was an editorial on the screen. How is he going to suspect from that that we're investigating him? You told Bo that Patrick had escaped from Langyard Clinic, right? And, and he also said he was going to help find him. Well, that's no reason for him to believe that you're in on it. If that guy is Patrick, believe me, he knows. But we don't know that he's Patrick. That's just a wild guess on our part. If he is Patrick, you are in serious danger. Do you know that? The man hates your guts. I won't be in any danger at Elizabeth's. It's practically like a hotel. She's in and out. There's servants all over the place. Uh-huh. Do you know that Elizabeth is real tight with Lord Henry, or at least she was? Oh, now you're just getting paranoid. You oh. can't assume that everyone Henry knew was in on his plan. Okay, fine. Look, I just want you to find something else to do tonight. Maybe have dinner with Max or something, because I'm going to be the one who talks to Bo. No. You two can't even be in the same room without fighting. He's not going to tell you anything. But if I can get to be friends with him, get him oh, to trust Sam. me, spend a little time with me, I will know whether it's Patrick. What do you think he's going to do? Just give up that information? If you do find out it's Patrick, he may try to kill you, and he may succeed. Look, no one knows my brother as well as I do. Sooner or later, he will say something that'll give him oh. away. And if he doesn't, then we'll both know we've been on the wrong track. Wait a minute, I just remembered something. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to call up a file from the health and medicine section of the banner a couple weeks ago. Okay. Dr. Howard Ripley, a European surgeon and pioneer in the field of reconstructive surgery, has developed a procedure to transform any facial or body structure with lasers. Not so much science fiction after all, now, is it? Ripley. Yeah, as in believe it or not. How do you like that? I'm telling you, Cindy, there is everything here to confirm what we've been talking about. What is it? Patrick's letter, listen. Dr. Ripley has promised I'll be out of here someday, and when I do get out, I won't forget all the debts I intend to collect. Could this be the same Dr. Ripley who is the laser surgeon, or is this just a coincidence? It's like our wild guess isn't as wild as we thought, huh? We could be right on target. Brenda, thank you for these beautiful flowers. They're lovely. I'm glad you were able to join us tonight. Me too. Hey, what are we eating tonight? Something I like, I hope. Oh, well, ever the gracious guest. <laughs> Soul with almonds. Is it fresh or frozen? It's fresh. I went to the market today. Or if you remember, I make a pretty mean trout on those camping trips. I catch me cooking. <laughs> How you doing there, Speedo? Oh, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's all right. Just, he just sat on his foot, he's not hurt. Come on, Al, big boys don't cry, right? You may not believe me. <laughs> you have any reason, really, to believe me. It, it never mattered that much to me. All that really mattered to me was just uh, having a good time, making love to pretty women, making money. Family and all that stuff you kept trying to shove down my throat, all that stuff we fought about. I understand what it means now. And I look at you here lying in bed day after day. Stevie, <clears throat> I want you back. I want you back so I can make up for all those fights. I want... I 
want to make up for those times that gave you a hard time. I want you back so I can tell you how much I love you. Steve, what's the matter? Chocolate is squirrel. Steve, what's wrong? Um, oh, nothing. Nothing. Why? Well, you just seem a million miles away, and you don't seem very happy. Oh, uh, I was I was thinking about about Al, and uh, what happens if he gets up to bat at the World Series and he strikes out, huh? Uh, Steve, don't even think about that. It's never going to happen. Okay, that's enough baseball talk. I don't want it mentioned until he's at least ten. <laughs> yeah, I think Al here seconds that motion. I think he's ready to sack out. Do you mind taking him up to the nursery for me while I try and find this box of diapers? Sure thing. Say goodnight, Brenda. Goodnight, Brenda. Very cute. <laughs> Steve, where'd you put the box of diapers? Steve, did you buy the diapers? Oh, diapers, yeah. I'm sorry. They're, they're, uh, they're upstairs in our room. Hey, good night, Tiger, huh? See you in the morning. You weren't worrying about whether or not Al was going to strike out at the World Series, were you? Are you uh, into ESP now? No, but I can certainly tell when you were covering something up like that a moment ago. Yeah, you're right, I was. Steve, if you weren't at the ballpark, you want to tell me where you were? I was trying to, to remember something. A, a, a memory? What kind? Yeah, it's it's Max. I was I was in the hotel. I was in the hospital, and I was asleep, and Max was by my side, and he was trying to tell me something painful. But I can't remember what it is. I get as far as I'm sorry, and then I'm blank. Why don't you ask him, Steve? No, I can't do that. Well, why not? Because whatever it is, Brenda, I don't think Max ever wants to say it again. <sighs> Patrick to Bo to Bo to Patrick. Okay, if what we suspect is true, then what happened to the real Bo? <clears throat> I don't know. You know, it's quite possible that he's, uh, in a prison someplace, I hope. Oh, Cord, you don't think that... Oh, my God. Cindy, come on, it's a logical progression. You know, Patrick did turn himself into Bo. Why are they going to keep the real guy hanging around, right? He can blow the whistle on him at any time. Well, wouldn't they have some use for the real Bo? Yeah, at first, I suppose. But what happens once he outlives his usefulness? Well, I, I don't even like thinking about this. But why would Patrick agree to give up his identity, you know, to become another man? Biggest reason in the world is freedom, not to mention his revenge. Well, I suppose Dr. Ripley was desperate for somebody willing to submit to his laser techniques. But why, Bo Buchanan? I mean, Patrick never even met him. I don't know. Maybe that's where Lord Henry comes in. Oh, or the people he's working with. But I just haven't figured that out yet. Elizabeth's involved. Huh? I know I accuse you of being paranoid when you suggested that. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that she asked me to stay at her house so she could keep an eye on me. All right, look, I don't want you going back there anymore because if Elizabeth is involved, she could be just as dangerous as Patrick. Well, if Bo is Patrick. I'm going to call Rafe. I'm going to tell the police exactly everything that's been oh, going on. Oh, poor, he will laugh in your face. No, he won't. He knows that everything that Rob and I have been working on for these past few months. Plus, he thinks that Lord Henry had something to do with Delilah's disappearance. If that's true, he's not going to laugh. If we get Bo to say something that only Patrick knows about, then you and I will be convinced that your uncle has been replaced with a duplicate. But how do we convince everybody else? I will call Rafe. Believe me, he's a cop. They have no ease of finding this stuff out. No, wait a minute. I've got an idea. I will tape the conversation I have with Bo tonight. Forget it. No, Cindy, no way, because that... that forget it. We're just right back at square one, all no, right? No, we aren't. Look, I've done some research in this company that does uh, voice print technology. Uh -huh. And even if a person tries to disguise their voice like oh, somebody else, Sin. the words they say can be printed in visual form. Now, voice prints are just like fingerprints. Every person's is individual and unique. Forget it. No way. You understand but, me? Court, I know it works. I invested in something. I don't something. care if it works or not, Cindy. 
We're talking about you going in, talking with a lunatic, all right? Wearing a wire. If he finds out you're wearing a wire, he will kill you. I won't let him find out. Oh, and how are you going to do that? Cindy, the man is devious, all right? If he is your brother, he will not trust a soul. Going to talk to him is bad enough, all right? But you go in there wearing a wire, you're just inviting disaster. Then how are we going to prove our theory? Or disprove it? How you doing, pal? Uh, Charlie, hi. How, how you doing? The guys in the ad department send you up here in Clint's office. Are you, you taking over as editor? Uh, no, no, just monkeying with the computer, that's all. Uh, 